Good morning. This is Talk to Live. Early Money Unlimited Inspiration with Roti Me Adedokun. Today, we don't know, I'm going to tell you right now. It's the 18th day of the month of October in the year 2020. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know your stress. I don't know your confusion. I don't know your unrest. I don't know your trouble. But one thing I know, that God has the present heir in the time of need. I want you to know that in this world you will find tribulation, but Jesus can be of good cheer because he has overcome the world for you. Today, 18th day of the month of October in the year 2020. Many unrest, uncertainty, unsure, that is flying around the world, that is ravaging in every corner of the street. In America, in Nigeria, in Europe, in Asia, Pacific Island, everything unrest, confusion, but one thing is sure, the Lord is in the midst of thee, is mighty. He will save, he will deliver. One thing is sure, one thing is sure, one thing is sure, that God will come true for us. So I don't know where you are, the situation that I found you this morning, I don't know the peace that is far away from your heart this morning. I don't know the unrest that is going on in your mind right now, in the family. But I want you to know, God, when God gives peace, no one can make trouble. Job 34 verse 29. The peace of God will always shatter the trouble of men. The peace of God. The peace of God, not that of man. The peace of God, we always shatter the trouble of man. No matter the situation, no matter the intention, no matter the, the, the gang up of hell over your heart, but just know that the peace of God we always shatter, crush, dismantle, you know, get rid of the trouble of men. Well, if you are new on this program, this is Talk to Life. Early Money Unlimited Inspiration with Roti Me Adedokun. One mission here. And the mission is to share with you the things God has provided for you. And much more, what is the things that you need to, to do as a responsibility. And when, man, when God's provision meets with man's responsibility, life will give you what you deserve, not what you desire. Somebody said, I heard it on social media today, that... Uh, the intervention of God need the inter, inter the intersection of God need the intervention of man, or either the intervention of man need the intervention of God. So either the intervention or the intersection, no matter what it is, your peace is what matters to God. So today. I want you to please do something for me. I want you to stand up and you're about to listen to something that you need around this time. Something that will speak to your soul around this time. Knowing fully well that you cannot walk down the aisle of your life by yourself. You need somebody who's going to hold your hands so you can walk to the altar for the blessing of God. Today, the 18th day of the month of October in the year 2020. I will be sharing with you on the subject of peace. Peace. 
notices. Welcome back. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We commit the United States into your hand. Few days to election. The election that will turn things around or turn things away. The election that either allow you to be in White House or chase you out of White House. The election that rather confirm if people still serve God or man is in charge of the affair of men. Lord, this morning we come here lifting up our holy hands to say, Lord Jesus, have your way in our lives. Have your way. Have your way in our business, in our vision, in our drive. Have your way. Lord, have your way in all that we do. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way and proof to the enemy that you are the master. Have your way as you silence those who have a negative intention to create unrest around the nation of the world. Have your way. And I use this opportunity to pray for Nigeria. Though I wasn't, I'm not living there anymore. Though my wife and the children are here with me, but we see our families there. We see our friends there who's always panicking, not knowing what is going on. Lord Jesus, please. 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 Intervene. Don't let the intercession of men to be wasted. Intervene. Don't let the prayer of the saint to go unattended to intervene. Lord, find your way into Asurok. Lord, find your way into every government house. Lord, find your way into everywhere that you need to be for peace to be restored in Nigeria. I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, that the movement that is going on in Nigeria... Let it yield good. So the effort of man or the blood that is shared will never, will never go unrewarded. This and much more I ask this morning, even as you bless the listener and change the story of men who are connected, that their time invested will never be wasted. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you penetrate into the airways, into the internet. And there will never be a disconnection or any form of unrest. Plead the blood of Jesus over this platform and let the people be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Talk to Life. Early morning, unlimited inspiration with Rotimi Adedoku. Guess what? Today is 140 days. 140 days of continuous showing up here. 140 days of giving you the glory because we know that you are here. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, How's everybody doing? Uh, if I tell you I don't follow up with what is in Nigeria, I will be denying myself. I follow up, scared sometimes, baffled, worried, uncomfortable, and fear. Not grieved me, but It shows me what is up, what is going on right now. But we lift everything into God's hand. So, as everybody doing, you know that mind blowing day when we shared about sacrifice. It was a blast. Yes, it was a blast. But it is what it is. We got, we did it. It's a sacrifice. It's push. It's press. It's squeezing. It's transition. I love those words. Love those words. And I said, without sacrifice, all you have is story. Uh, without sacrifice, all you have is story. Sacrifice. Sacrifice is the language of the world champion. Sacrifice is the language of world champion. So, the question I need to ask you today, are you ready to sacrifice? Or have you sacrificed? I asked you that yesterday. Now what are you going to do with this? So sacrifice is good, but sacrifice takes time, energy, and resources. Like I said, if you count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, in 14 places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14 times 10 is 140. That is the number of the days that God has been using this boy to be a blessing to you. Sometimes I'm tired. Today, I write what I'm about to share with you right now in 5 or 10 minutes. I know what I'm about to say, but tired. You know, fatigue. <laughs> but you know what makes you a leader is not that you are not fearful but you are not full of fear <laughs> you are fearful there is fear around you but you are not full of it you never allow it fear is coming to bump into you but you are bouncing it back saying no 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 sometimes you are distracted but you have to comport yourself sometimes you lose your focus but you have to drag yourself back sometimes you are down but you have to bring yourself up that's what I think who a leader is. So this morning I'll be sharing with you on the subject of peace. That we need peace in Africa. We need peace in the United States. We need peace all over the world. That the devil will never penetrate into the affairs of men. That God will release his angel and shut down the intention of the kingdom of hell. That God will go in his capacity, in his ability to be able to know that, hey, to be able to take on sit the devil and bring peace like a river to flow into everything that we do. Because without God, you have to do good things. Some time ago, I wrote an article. I said, you did that God it or you Google it. When you are looking for information, you look for YouTube. And you never think about God too. Sometimes the first thing ask yourself when you find you find a word newly, all you need to do is go to Google, but you never got it. So please help me to write it down. It's either you YouTube it or you what or you go to it. You go through it or you YouTube it. <laughs> it's either you Google it or you got it. You have to make a choice. What some of you don't know that everything that you find on internet are what people have put there. So 
If I write anything right there, if you type my name, you see most of my writing. These are what I deem truth to me. These are what I said they are. What is truth to me? But the question is, are they the ultimate truth? So there's a many unrest in Nigeria, unbelievable things that is happening. And many so in Africa, in America, in around the world. But you know what happened? I will not Google it, I will not YouTube it, I will God it, and I will truth, and I will go through it. But knowing fully well that God cannot lie, men can, and men will. God is in the midst of thee, is mighty. So before I proceed on the subject of peace today, looking up right here in my top right hand corner, there's this program that is going on. I want to give opportunity to the lady, you know, some people say, oh, timid, or help us out. Okay, if you can register right now, the link is there. You can bring one person to join you. But if you know that you know and you know you really want to join and you don't have the 25,000 uh, 25, uh, naira there, send email to my new Don TV and we'll figure out we'll figure out how we can get you in. We want to we want to try as bring as many ladies as possible. But you have to be able to tell us that you really really need it. It's going to happen on October 31st, October 31st, this month, and the 1st of November. It's going to be a mind-blowing section. Yeah, we have a person like a Paul Ford. Paul Ford teaches, he focuses on ladies, on how they can increase their sales to 30% in 90 days. And I have there, Kemi Oye. Kemi Oye is a powerful, awesome lady that teaches ladies on how to find, or ladies are across the board, on how to find your voice in, 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 in workplace or in doing your personal business, how you can carry yourself, your posture, your thought. And I have Mariah there. Mariah is a powerful, well known lady. She's one of these uh, talk to something program on the channels TV. Everybody knows her. Yes, very popular lady. And uh, so you don't want to miss Mariah. Very powerful lady. Uh, lady. She's a content developer. You're going to see how you can use internet to project yourself to the world. And we have uh, the patient who done very powerful and talented lady. She's a personal, uh, personal development coach. She teaches you as a lady or now to carry yourself, develop yourself, and grow alongside with it. And Timmy Tokwe Debbie, wow, wow. You have to have a conversation with this lady for you to know. She will turn everything that you are doing now with nothing. She will turn it into something for you. It will produce to you, help you to come up with an idea from what you think, there is nothing about it. And guess what? Taiwo, wow. She's a lawyer and she has practiced bank, you know, banking for so long. But right now, she's passionate about marriage. You know, I tell people, I said she set bars. <laughs> she, you know, she was called to bar, but right now, she started setting bars in marriage. That, this lady, she's, she's phenomenal. I'm going to be there, of course, Roti Miali Doko. I'll be teaching you the secrets of ladies. The secret that you need to know so you'll never take no for an answer and much more. My wife is going to be there. Maybe some of you are going to be seeing that. So these are much more are the things. Somebody said, Roti Oh, can, can you help us out? That's why I said, send email to my new Dawn TV. My new Dawn TV. Yes, send email to my new Dawn TV for inquiry and let me know. But I wish you can just click on that link right now and just register register right now register right now register right now register right now okay so i wanted to do something but i wanted to please please and um, please i wanted to go and invite one person to today's program we are about to start invite one person hi confidence she's here yay confidence is here hello so I wanted to please invite one person, one person, just one person, to join you in today's program. Invite one person. Yes, I need one person. Invite one person. One person, one person, one person. When you invite that one person, uh, we're going to go straight to make it happen.
Remember, this is Dr. Lo Welcome back. This is Talk to Live. Let's go straight to business. Hi, Instagram. Hi, Facebook. And hi, YouTube. Let's go. I think we prayed. So let's go straight to business. Please, if you can share with me that with the things that you learned yesterday. But if no, you can't. It's not a problem. We're still going to go. We're still going to proceed anyway. So today, I'll be sharing with you on the uh, today, the 18th day of the month of uh, October in the year 2020. I'll be sharing with you on the subject of peace. Of peace. If you don't need anything right now, you need the peace of God. If you don't need the, the, the anything right now, you need the peace of God. When the peace of God come upon you, you will never fail or feel the trouble, the pressure, the, the distraction on in this world. We full, the world is full of distraction, of, of, of you know, you distressed about it, many things that is going on. But regardless of whatever is going on, if God is for you, who can be against you? You know, I think Psalm 46, verse 1, Psalm 46, verse 1, very powerful statement. It said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. A very present help in the time of trouble. So, I don't know where you are. I don't know who you are. I don't know what is going on in your bank account, the trouble that you need. Men are not the solution of your life. God is the solution of it. So when God, you allow God to step into the affair of your life, uh, trouble is going to turn to peace. Frustration is going to turn to peace. Unrest is going to turn to peace. Your fear is going to turn to peace. Your uncertainty is going to turn to peace. And that is what you need. He said, God is our refuge, a place to hide our strength when we are weak. A very present self. So, you don't get God after. You don't get God before. You get God exact. I love that. Let it be up. You don't get God before or after the situation that you need him. Now that you get God before. You get God exact. What does that mean? If you make, make it to heaven, you have to go and ask the three Hebrew boys. You don't get God before. You don't get God after. You will only get God exact. <laughs> I love that. I've never heard it like that before. Amen. So, I don't care that situation is. God will come true for you. I don't care your situation. God will come true for you. So, you don't get. Neither would you get God before. You only get God. Exact. Now, 
Bible says faith is now. So God is now. Did you see that? If faith is now, God is now. So I don't know what you are going through. I don't know your frustration, your rest. I don't know what is going on around you, but I want you to note, you might not get God after when it becomes useless. You might not get God before when you will not appreciate him, but you will get God exact when you really need him. The three evil boys, we are being told To start bowing for another God as created by the king. But because of their background, they knew there's only one God, the God of Hebrews, Jehovah, the Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim, the Hell. That's the God. You know, the name that is Samuel, Gabriel, Hell, 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 Hell. That is the name of God. <laughs> A lot of people don't know. Samuel. Gabriel. <laughs> but I'm not going to talk about that today. What am I trying to say today? The Hebrew boy said, no, we are not going to bow. He said, our God, Daniel chapter 3, verse 15, 16, our God whom we trust will deliver us. He said, listen, even if he does not, we will not bow to you, okay? I will not be careful. Can you imagine that a president of a country is being dis disrespected on a national TV when not just the citizens of their country is watching, the entire world is watching because when the day they dedicated that God, they invited social media, you know, you know, powerful guys to put it on YouTube, to put it on Instagram, to put it on Facebook, to put it on everywhere. But these guys will not bow. Write this down. It's no more news. Those who don't bow cannot burn. You will only burn when you bow. Those who bow, those who don't bow cannot burn. Those who don't bow cannot burn. Those who don't bow cannot burn. You will only burn when you bow. So, listen. The peace of God will always shatter the trouble of men. I don't know what you are going through right now, but if you invite that peace of God to come into you, it will conquer, it will stop, it will render useless everything that the enemy is putting, all the unrest that the enemy is putting into your heart. So the peace of God that we are talking about is not the pieces of God. It's not the what? Pieces of God. It's not a maybe, maybe, maybe not. No. You know, this might be too much for some people to comprehend, which is all right if you can't. This might be too much for some people to, to understand, but I want you to know this. If you are in trouble, God is ready to deliver you. If you are in trouble, God is ready to deliver you. He will save. God will first take care of you before he asks you, hey, do, have you know Jesus? No. When, that's why, go and look at the people that God healed. <clears throat> Jesus never tell them, Jesus healed. Jesus never said, follow me first. No. He said, hey, be healed. And he said, hey, follow me. So I want you to know is that uh, no matter where you are around the world right now, no matter what, you might be on somebody's bed that you are not supposed to be. You might have taken the money that's not belong to you. You might be living a life that does not glorify God. But I want you to know, God still wants to meet you where you are and give you the peace that you need. I love that. God wants to meet you where you are and give you the peace that you need. If you are just joining us, today I'm teaching on the power of peace. Peace of God in the midst of trouble, in the midst of chaos, the peace of God. When you don't, let me tell you something. A young lady built it, thinking... Only when she finds she find boyfriend that she will be appreciated, that she will really have joy, and she's desperate. She never cared about her beauty again. She just needed a man in her life. And when this man comes, they started dating. Then argument step in. He said, "No, guys struggle with their girls because they are not married." And finally, the guy engaged her. And they got married. And the temple of the fight increased. He said, no. 
the guy is, um, is fighting you because you don't have kids. Now, they have two boys and a girl. Hey, the tempo of the fight increased. Hey, no, it's because of the kids that have been introduced into your life. That was why you don't have co connection with your husband again. No, the kids grow and they leave home. Now it's with, lead to, led with you and your husband. Let me tell you something. There is no peace anywhere except in Jesus. Your beauty is not enough to give you peace. With the country that you live, it's not enough to give you peace. So they are shouting Black Lives Black Life Matter in the US. They are shouting end police brutality in Nigeria. Can that not make you to think that it's not about where you live? Except God give peace, trouble continue. Do you see the unrest everywhere in Asia? Is that a function of where you live? No. If God is not there, trouble shows up. If God is not there, unrest becomes the order of the day. What am I trying to say to you? I'm trying to tell you that you need the peace of God or you will get the pieces of men. Think about it in a minute. It's a life is a choice. Life is a choice. So let me proceed. The third point I want to give it to you this morning before I go straight to the definition is this. If you want distinction, your intersection have to meet with God's intervention. Intercession of men have to meet with the intervention of God before there can be what? Peace. A distinct peace is a function of the intersection of men and the intervention of God. So peace is not what you get by crossing your leg. Peace is on the street. Peace is in your action. Peace is in your movement. Peace is what you demand. You don't wait for it. Peace is on the go. You have to catch up with it. Because of time, let me quickly give you some definition of peace here. I say peace is God stepping into the situation of man. When God step into the situation of man, that is peace. Because with God we serve is not a troublemaker God. So a, the God who is peace himself will give you peace. God, who is peace himself, will give you peace. The God, who is peace himself, is the only one that can give you peace. I don't know what you are struggling with in your life. The God of peace himself will give you peace. The God of peace himself <laughs> that God is the only one who can give you peace. He will give you peace by all means. By all means. The God of peace himself will give you peace by all means. I think that's Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse 16. Let's confirm that place. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 16. Let's see what it is. It says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace by all means. The Lord be with you all. The Lord of peace himself we give you peace. Do you see? You cannot get peace outside God. That's why I said peace, it simply means God stepping into the situation of men. God stepping in, into the situation 
of men. God stepping in into the situation of men. God stepping it into the situation of men. God stepping it into, you know, they said God is our refuge and strength. Psalm 46 verse 1. A very present help in time of need. So, remove God from me, you are left to pieces. That's why I said the peace of God or the pieces of man. So, the first definition that you need to pay attention to this morning, wherever you are, the 18th day of the month of October in the year 2020, what I want you to know that what you need is the peace of God. When that peace comes, your marriage will be restored. When that peace comes, God will give you wisdom on how to go about it. When you're about to go about your life, when that peace comes, you will never be worried by the intervention of men. Rather, you will be concerned about God's intervention. Remember, it only men can intercede, but God needs to intervene. That's why I call it intercession of men. Have to meet with the intervention of God for you to have God's distinction in peace. So the second definition of peace here is peace is heavens taking over earthly worries. Heaven taking over earthly worries. When you are unrest, you are not at peace. When what you need then is not marriage, it's not relationship. What you need there is not a touch, it's not a feeling, it's not a YouTube video to watch. What you need then is God Himself. Where are you listening to me this morning? I mean, where are you around the world right now? You might be listening to this maybe 10 years to come, 5 years to come, 20, 30, and the Lord tell you, maybe 50, 100. This, by God, if YouTube is still alive, if Facebook is still alive, if El, the, the podcast station, Apple, is still alive, but I want you to note that the peace you are looking for is not in men. It's not in boyfriend, girlfriend, it's not in your money, it's not where you work, it's not about who, who, where you live, it's not in the designer that you wear, it's in the God that you don't know. When you know God, peace will be your portion. Guess what? God is ready to give you that peace today. He said, let the God of peace himself give you peace by all means. So it's going to take God everything to give you all that you want. It does not matter. Because of you, he sent his son to die. Because of you, he sent his spirit to guide you. So how much more? God, one thing I know, he will take care of you. The Bible said in verse 10, please, Psalm 46, verse 10, it said, be still and know that I am God. 140 days, 140 days of continually showing up here. Why is it today I'm speaking about peace? Why is it? I don't know. But I just felt that it is time to talk about peace. I just felt that it is time. It is time. I just felt that peace is what we need right now. Peace. He said, be still and know that I am God. You know, Jesus Christ told his disciples, let's go to the other side. You know, what people don't know, I've preached this before. You have to know whose company you are. Who called you? Who instructed you? Is the foundation that you will hold on to or the, 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 the solution that you, you, you will trust when there is nothing else to trust? Jesus tell them, I think it's that Mark 4 or 5. Jesus tell them, he said, let's go to the other side. Let us go. <laughs> Let us go to the other side, Jesus Christ told them. And they'll get there, I think it's Mark chapter 4. When they go, and they miss. In the, in, in the channel or in the process or in the pipeline of going to the other side, then storm came and the people were baffled. The people were worried, were disturbed. He said, what is happening here? And they, they got to a particular, and they, they have been struggling trying to do it by themselves. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden they realized that, listen,
I think there is somebody in this boat that has not called. There is somebody in this boat who doesn't care, according to our definition, but is sleeping. The Bible said Jesus Christ was laying there on his pillow. And they came to him. He said, Master, do you care that we perish? Do you care that we perish? I think that was a wrong question. That was why when Jesus Christ stood up, he said, why are you fearful, you of little faith? He stood up, Jesus, he went to the edge of the boat and said, peace! Be still. <laughs> you know, people don't understand that scripture. I'll be able to teach you some time ago, and I understood it. This is what happened. Two words. He said, peace. Be still. Listen, it, Jesus did not say to the wind to be, to be, to, to be peaceful. No. He commanded the, the wind to be still. But before Jesus, you know, this is mind-blowing for anybody who is open heart. Jesus never said to the wind to be peaceful. No. Jesus first invited peace into the boat. He invited peace in the boat. Maybe I should read it for you. Let's read Mark chapter 4. Uninvited stillness can never be appreciated. I think that somebody should know that. There's things now now that you are worried about because you have never invited peace into your life. <laughs> I think it's time from verse 35 downward, but let me go straight. I think in verse 46, in verse 39, the Bible said, and he arose, that's Jesus, and rebuked the wind. He actually rebuked the wind. He said to the sea, peace! In the midst of trouble, Jesus invited peace. And look at the next one. Be still. So what brings stillness is peaceful. Invited peace in the midst of chaos. Until there is peace that steps in, nothing will be still. So one thing I come to tell you this morning, guess what? Peace. Be still. <laughs> Peace. Be, be still. I don't know what you are going through. Unrest in marriage. Hey, peace. Be still. Be still. <laughs> Whatever you are going through right now, remember, call the peace first. Then speak about stillness into the wind of your life. Until peace is invited, nothing will be still. So, definition number two, because of time, I said peace is heaven taking over earthly worries. This is what I'm talking about, Dan. So, heaven stepping. And what happened? Worry. Stop. One more definition as we proceed. And the first definition, if you are just joining us, the first definition of peace that is peace is God stepping into the situation of man. And Jesus Christ stood up from his sleep. Amen. And Psalm 2, God is watching the people and was in heaven, was laughing. Amen. And then number one, peace is God stepping into the situation of man. Number two, peace is heaven taking over at earthly worry. Number three, peace is the invitation of unlimited joy to take over unlimited sadness. <laughs> Until unlimited joys take over unlimited sadness, there can never be peace. Until your sadness is replaced with peace or with joy. So, 
If you need to pray, pray. If you need to go and restitute, go do it. If you need to go and uh, whatever you think is right for you, whatever you think is necessary for you, I want you to please get it done. Peace. Be still. Inviting unlimited joy to take over the limited sadness. Let's proceed. The nugget of peace. Number one, peace is divine. It is spiritual. You can't be peaceful and people not know. Show around you. It will reflect in your communication. When you have the peace of God, it will, it will balance your life. When you have the peace of God, you will not worry about what is in your bank account or the designer that you wear. When you have the peace of God, you will never be worried that what is going on, but you'll be much concerned about where you are going to. If you have the peace of God, you'll be much more concerned. Not about what is going on, but where you are going to. So, this morning, I want you to know that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, <laughs> the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that's what you want. The peace of God. <laughs> That surpass all understanding. I think that's Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. The peace of God that surpass all understanding. You need that. You need that. You need that. You need that. You, you need that. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. The peace of God that surpass all, all understanding. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding, it's beyond men. That's what you want. Paul was writing, he said, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your heart, my true Christ Jesus. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. <laughs> the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. So, it's not the peace of men, but the peace of God. That's why I say peace is spiritual, is divine. Number two, I say peace is God himself. I think it's in Exodus chapter 3, when God was having an, an, Moses had an encounter with God. And I think in, let me confirm that, Exodus chapter 3, I think that's verse, Exodus chapter 3, maybe verse 8. He said, God said, I have heard the crying of my people, therefore, I have come down. Yes. Verse 8. That is peace. If you read chapter 2, the last two verses, the Bible said, the people sighed, they cried. They were in agony, distress. They, uh, Goliath, uh, sorry, Pharaoh died, but yet they needed the solution. So peace is God stepping into as a solution to the generation of men. Peace is God. Let God be the solution. Number three. Number three. Peace, thank you Jesus, is confidence. Peace guarantees your confidence. Peace, this I know. Peace is confidence. I think it's in Psalm 56 verse 9. David said, this I know for God is with me. That is peace. He said, when I cry out to you, then my enemy will turn back. Do you see that? If 
enemy does not turn back, you will see your neck up. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I don't know who is listening to me right now. But God will never allow the enemy to know the secret of your joy. God will never allow the enemy to know the secret of your joy. God will never allow the enemy to know the secret of your joy. You will never know when Samson exposes himself through a lust, not a love. They remove his two hide. His sight was removed. You know, the cut of his hair, his sight was removed. The hair, the hair rep represents the power that God has given to him. The sight represents his vision. That means when your power is shattered, your vision will be glory. <laughs> So vision is not the first, but the power, the endowment of God is the key. Oh my God. I need to put that down myself. So when your power is shattered, is reduced to nothing, your vision will be blurry. When your power is reduced, is shattered, <laughs> then your vision will be blurry. <laughs> That's not where I'm going to. You will, you will get where I'm going to right now. So, this guy's vision was shattered, devastated. You know, it was reduced to nothing because his power has gone. What connect God with him? There's a disconnection. So when there's disconnection, you will see your littleness. You know, what people, what you call normal, that's what people are using to see you as an extraordinary person. So what you call normal is because God is for you. So when you remove that thing that God gives to you, connecting you, the Wi-Fi that connects you with God, people will start seeing your nakedness. You know what happened? This guy called Samson, Hair was called, which is the power of God. And the people knew, I'm dragging you somewhere, please listen to me. Help me. The people knew that what makes him vulnerable was the hair that was caught. So when they removed his side and they chain him, and they are trying to tell him to you know, make some performance for them, the Bible said his hair started growing up. The question is, if the people knew that cutting off his head, it is what makes him vulnerable, reduced to nothing, just like every other man. Mm. What makes them not to have some people on watch to be cutting his hair as he's growing again? Can I tell you something? Until God turned off what the enemies are I mean, enemies are using to bring you down, you will see your littleness. If God, if God should turn off what the enemy are using against you, you are a superman. But when that thing is turned on, you become you see your own littleness. What am I trying to say? The power of something was in his head. God with him connection. They cut it off. They change him. They remove his side. They're supposed to look for people who's going to stand by. They will be removing his hair. So he will not gain back the power. But you know what happened? God blocked the eyes of the enemy. They thought doing it once is enough. I'm very sure in my personal study, not what is documented, in my personal study, if Samson prayed to God to give him, to, for him to die with the enemy, he could have prayed to God to restore his sight. Because if his hair can grow again, hey, his eyes can come back again. Yes. Oh, I love that. If the power of God can come back on you, your vision can be restored. I don't care where you are. 
Samson died because he wanted to die. He has lost it. He thought that, oh no, I've come to the end of my life. But guess what? I don't know who is listening to me right now. You have not come to the end of your life. You have come to the end of your mistakes. And right now, after now, I mean now, after now, shall your air grow again. And you can ask for the restoration of your sight. He asked God, say, God, let me die with my enemy. No, that's not what you want. You know, some people don't know the God that we serve. That is a good, good father. Psalm 118 verse 1. So, I'm going to tell you today, don't die with your enemy. If your hair can grow, your sight can be restored. Oh, I love that. <laughs> if your hair can grow again, your sight can be restored. So, peace is divine, peace is God, peace is confidence. So he has confidence in God. And guess what? In my God is peace by, you know, by killing all his men. The Bible said the number of people who died that day, the Samson died, was more than the number of people who had killed in his lifetime. That might be fair to him, but I, don't, I will not die with my enemy. Note, note. I will transition into heaven to meet with my God. I will not die with my enemy. And I pray for you. You will not die with your enemy. I know that it got you, but you will not die with them. Number four, peace is assurance. And number five, peace is promising. So number one, peace is divine. Number two, peace is God. But number three, peace is confidence. Number four, peace is assurance. And number five, peace is promising. Five things you need to know about peace. Without peace, there will be confusion. Without peace, there will be confusion. Number two, without peace, there will be fear. You know why many people cannot rest? They can't sleep because they are fearful. So without peace, lack of peace, it's so simple. If you are not peaceful inside, Fear will be written all over you. Number three, without peace, there will be uncertainty. You will never be sure of what is going on. And number four, without peace, there will be unrest. And number five, of course, without peace, there will be shame. There will be shame. What about, I've just given you a scripture today. I've written, I've read a lot for you. Job 34, verse 29. Job 34, verse 29. The Bible said, when God gives peace, no one can make trouble. Mm. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. <laughs> when God gives peace, no one can make trouble. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. So the trouble of man can be quenched by the peace of God. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. The trouble of men will be quenched by the peace of God. When God give peace, no one. When God give peace, no one can make trouble. The trouble of men can be quenched, can be silent, <laughs> can be put to rest. By the peace of God, when God give peace, no one can make trouble. When God give peace, no one can make trouble. When God give peace, no one can make trouble. When God give peace, I don't know who I'm speaking to, that the peace of God is what you need right now in your marriage. 
The peace of God is all that you need to, ma to have all your needs met. When God gives you peace, no one can make trouble. Listen, you cannot even create trouble yourself. When God gives peace, maybe somebody will catch it this morning. No one can give trouble. When God gives peace, no one can give trouble. When God gives peace, no one can give trouble. When God gives peace, no one can give trouble. I speak by the power in the name of Jesus. Every unrest in your life receive the peace of God. When God gives peace, no one can give trouble. When God gives peace, no one can give trouble. When God gives peace, no one can give trouble. When God gives peace, I bring peace. I invite the peace of God into your life. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16. It says God himself will give you peace. He will ensure peace in your life. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. I decree upon your life, your finances will find peace. Your earth will find peace. Your ministry will find peace. Your body will find peace. Your mental capacity will find peace. Your heart will find peace. Your end will find peace. Your leg will find peace. Your relationship will find peace. Your marriage will find peace. Your children will find peace. Your marriage will find peace. When God gives peace, no one can give trouble. When God gives peace, no one can give, no one, not man, not man, not the president of the country, not the senator, not the congressman, not the local government chairman, not the mayor of wherever you are. When God gives peace, let these things, let it sink, let it settle with you. That's what I mean by sink. Let it settle in your heart. You know, until you project it over and over, you will never get it. The Bible said, the Bible said, let this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night on this 100 and 140 days. I decree the peace of God, not like the world will give you, I mean the peace that only God can give you, John 14, 27. The peace, not like the world gives you. Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 32. He said, go into this world. You will find tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. I have given you peace. When God gives peace, no one can give trouble. I speak by the power in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God that surpass all understanding. Philippians 4, 7. Let it come upon you. Let it come upon you. Let it come upon, upon your family. Let it come upon your health. I come against every form of sickness, disease that is ravaging in your life right now in the name of Jesus. No days when God give peace. No one. Job 34 verse 29. No one can give trouble. In the midst, when there was turbulence in the sea, Jesus was on the boat with them. He said, peace, until peace is, in, is invited, you will never get it. So you have to invite peace into your life this morning. Jesus is the prince of peace. Get this right. So when they say give your life to Jesus, it's not come and play around. It means invite Jesus, the prince of peace, into your life. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. When God gives peace, <laughs> no one can make trouble. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. Jesus, when God gives peace, no one can make trouble. Let's read it. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. When God gives peace, no one can make trouble. Isaiah, when God gives peace, no one can make trouble. Say, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Why do they call Jesus Christ Prince of Peace? <laughs> you know, most of you don't know, you know, with all due respect, and not because of the certificate that I have, a Master of Divinity. 
I'm speaking to you because God will give me a little insight about the Bible. I don't know too much. When a little boy is born into the royal family, if it's a day old boy, he's a prince. If it's a day old girl, she's a princess. As far as the prince is in his father's domain, he's still a prince. He can be 70 years old and still be a prince. As far as the king is still in the throne, he's still a prince. What changes the status of a prince into a king is when he either departs his father to go and start another domain or his death of his father. That was the way the Bible said, it said, unto us a child. Jesus, it was the prince of peace. Now he has become the law of all. <laughs> he has become what? The king of peace. The king of peace. Let's be together in heavenly places. Far above. We are in two cause with him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 to 6. What am I trying to say today? Don't forget this. That when the Lord gives peace, no one can make trouble. No one. 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 No one can make trouble. So, let me tell you three ways on how you can get peace. One, the peace in God. God will give you peace by all means. Men cannot give you peace. Because everybody has what they are dealing with. Yes. So never ever think. That's why God said, Thou shalt not have any other God. Exodus chapter 20, from verse 3 to 5. He said, I'm a jealous God. Why? If God is working hard for you to be at peace and you are taking his glory to go and meet another God, can you be working and you are paying somebody a paycheck? Give you somebody a paycheck? No. God said, I can't be working for you working for you to protect you. Psalm 121 from verse 1 to 8. He said, the one that is keeping you never sleep, no slumber. Okay? So if God should those one second, you're going to die in that minute. Because the devil is targeting you always with the sniper. Want to erase you. So the protection of God is what makes you alive. So God said, hey, that shall not have any other God. That I, I, I own you. I pay for you. So there is a peace in God. That's what you want. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. Now the Lord of peace himself will give you peace. Always, by all means. Underline by all means. God said, maybe we should now always by all means. God said, listen to this. Uh, he said, I don't care whatever it's going to cost me. I'm just going to ensure your peace. Simple. It's going to cost me. I don't care. But I'm going to ensure what? I'm going to ensure your peace. God will ensure your peace. So you will be at peace. I love that. When God ensured your peace, you're going to be at peace. When God ensured your peace, when God ensured your peace, you will be at peace. I love that. Not men. They can promise you security. Have they secured themselves? Thank God for CCTV camera. But we have a CCTV God. Who watches over us all the time? Camera can be shut down. They can invade into camera system and shut it down. Okay. You can only find peace in God. The peace in God. Number two. You can find peace in Jesus. John 16, 33. I read it earlier. John chapter 14, verse 27. I read both earlier. Jesus Christ was speaking. He said, peace I live with you. Did you see that? He said, peace I give to you. Oh, I live with you. Peace I give to you. What does that mean to you? Peace I live with you. So when he departs, he never departs with his peace. 
He left it behind, not throw it at you. He positioned it. He said, peace, I give to you. So he lived with you. So I come back. He said, no, 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 no. You might be thinking I throw it at you. Maybe. He said, no, come, take it. I give to you. Is that not simple enough? Peace, I live with you. Peace, I give to you. Oh, my God. You have to get it right. You have to get it right. He said, peace, I live with you. He said, no worry, maybe you don't know that you are, you are the one I'm talking about. He said, peace, I give to you. I decree in the name of Jesus, let that peace of God find speedy fulfillment in your life. Peace, I give, I live with you. Peace, I give unto you. Peace, I live with you. You have to understand this thing. You know, many people are crushed because they don't understand the Bible. God said, in case you think that I throw this water to you, he said, listen, I'm sorry. I'm going to get it right now. He said, this water, I live with you. He said, no, no, that's not, you don't, you need more than that. He said, this water belongs to you. Is that not simple? That's how you should get it. Somebody said, oh, he leave it with you, but never says you use it. No, Jesus Christ now said, peace, I give to you. Maximize it. Leverage on it. I decree, God of heaven, who release his son Jesus to give you peace, that God will take care of you. The peace of God will locate you in the midst of trouble. Wherever you really need God, God who went ahead of Esther, the same God gave Ruth boldness to follow Naomi. That same God made Joshua to be positioned with Moses. That same God made Elijah to, Elisha to follow Elijah. Guess what? That same God is at work when Moses went back to Egypt. That same God will show for you. He said, peace, I live with you. Get what? Peace, I give to you. Not, he continued in verse 27 on John, of the book of John. He said, not as the word give. Can the them lie to you? He said, oh, the politician. Jesus continued, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So why are you troubled? Why owe oh, you of little faith? Peace, I live with you. Peace, I give unto you. Not as the word give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 27. So in that confirmation in John 16, 33, Jesus, the same Jesus said, he said, this thing I have spoken unto you, that in me, you might have peace. In me, you will have peace. But in the world, you will have tribulations. But the good news is that, be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. I love that. I love that. So this morning, I come to tell you that peace can only be found in Jesus because he will, he said, he ensure peace to be unto you. Second Thessalonians 3, 16, peace can also be found in Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 27, John chapter 16, verse 33. And the last one, in case you don't believe in the Bible and you are still troubled in your heart, I want you to know that nobody can promise you peace. The peace that you get is the peace that you create yourself. If you are a worrisome person, you know what happened? You can't have peace. If this water is here, you'll be wondering, why? Why is this water here? No, I think something's going to happen. Oh, something's going to happen. No. If you are worried, then you'll be, <laughs> you must be a warrior fighting. No. God has fight my battle. Why am I worried? Knowing fully well that everything has been prepared. Psalm 46 that we said. Verse 1. Psalm 46. Verse 1. 
6 verse 10. <laughs> you know, you need to understand and get your understanding about God. He said, God is our refuge, a place to hide, our strength, the power to combat the enemy. He said, a very present help in the time of need. So when you need God right now, he's there. That's why he said, uh, you don't just need a peace, you need the God kind of peace. Amen. Look at verse 10. He said, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the hidden, I'll be exalted on the head. If you look at verse 9, it's going to, you're going to appreciate verse 9 more. He said, he make the war to cease unto the end of the earth. So God will not just make trouble to cease right now to the end of the earth. He make trouble to cease. He breaked the bows and cut the spear in sunder. He burned the shadow. Do you mean God said, everything I want to restart the trouble, I've, you know, send them a packing. So the question I come to give you today, ask you today, sorry, is that why are you worried? It's because you are what? You have little faith. So, if you don't take the peace of God, and you refuse to take the peace of Jesus, you need to give yourself peace and stop being worried. So, that's what I got today. Peace of God or the pieces of men. You have to make a choice. So, thank you everybody, wherever you are around the world today. What have you heard? Peace of God. Eh? 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 of men. Life is a choice. I got a piece of God inside of me. I don't need to be worried because God is for me. And if God be for you, who can be against you? The peace of men or the pieces of God. You gotta make a choice or they will make one for you. Peace of God or the pieces of men. You gotta make a choice a devil make one for you. A peace of God are the pieces of man. I'm settled in the peace of God. I'm settled with the peace of God. I don't need to worry about anything. I'm settled in the peace of God. Peace of God. Peace of God. I'm settled with the peace of God. I'm going to worry. But the peace of man, we got to be done. Peace of God, peace of God. I'm settled with the peace of God. I'm not gonna worry about the pieces of man. Maybe one day I'm going to compose a song. That song is for me in case you turn it to be anything. Come and give me royalty. <laughs> Yay! We come to the end of it. Peace of God or the peace of man. The choice, the choice is yours. What have you heard today? Everybody, what have you heard? What have you heard? Do you have anything to contribute? What is it that I said that doesn't make sense? Type it there. What is it that I said that makes sense to you? And much more. What is it? What is that thing that you think I'm supposed to say that I forgot that you can have to us? Or what is it that you've not heard before that you heard today? What is it? Type it there, and uh, if you're on Instagram, I think we should we can get you the link. So, it's my donut. So, guys, we come to the end of today. Peace. You know, people call this peace. I got to realize that it's not peace. It's a sign of victory. Okay. It's not V for victory, not peace. I thought it very well. So, come to the end of it. What have you heard this morning? What have you heard? Oh, sister, I told you you're on Facebook today. I said, where is she? Wow. Please help us to share this. Let somebody be blessed.
So, what have you heard today? What have you heard? 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 Okay. Thank you, everybody. We gotta go right now. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, same time, same place. God willing, we're gonna be here sharing with you another powerful <laughs> that will revolutionize your life talking about talk to life early money unlimited inspiration with the roots in your living room god bless you and i'll see you tomorrow amen Let's not forget, I need to add it before I leave. Remember, you are designed for royalty and you cannot afford to settle for less. Take care and God bless you.